Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everybody. All right now. Um, how are we all doing? All right now. Okay, so we know the drill. Um, if you can just move to your left or to your right, just say hi to somebody beside you. Um, ask how your day went. How, ask how it has been so far. You know, today is Monday. And for some of us that we don't like Monday, you know, it's, it can be a bit tough. So just, just stand up. Walk up to somebody beside you that you've not met before, please. Just ask how their day went, ask how they are doing, how, how, how everything went. Just, just strike up a very interesting conversation with them, you know. Yeah, ask how everything is going. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Doesn't have to be for too long, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if I, I can see some people, they'd not even stand up, I even pity my ministry server, yeah. Either way, so let's just um, let's just begin to to have. Um, so it's pretty simple. I'm just going to lead in prayers today. So I'd like everybody to just stand um, as we just like take the prayer. So I normally like to take the opening prayer as more like a as us committing the service. Thank you, thank you. As us committing the service into God's hands and everything that's going to happen, because I do not just see singles fellowship as just singles fellowship. I see this as an avenue for us to also win souls for Christ. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's transform people that would have transformed lives, as Pastor Kunle will say, and which is a reality. And at the end of the day, it's people that have given their lives and submitted themselves to the Holy Spirit that would also live transformed lives too at the same time. So I would like just like us to begin to pray and commit today's service to God's hands. Everything that's going to happen right from, the, from Pastor Kuni that's going to preach to all the other things from the choir administration to every single part that's going to happen. I just wanted to commit into God's hands because we see it as just a regular fellowship but at the end of the day, it's not just. It can be that song, it can be that ministration that will turn someone's heart that is hard to a soft heart. It may be that particular word that would come today that would change the life of somebody that would come to service today. So I just want us to pray for that person. Let's pray for the service that every single part of service is not just going to be every single part of service. It's going to be divinely orchestrated by God even though it may seem normal but the lives that are going to be touched by service today God has already ordained it and God has already planned it. And let's just begin to pray that it will come to pass. The people that need to be here will be here to receive their miracle. The people that need to be here to have transformed lives will come here and have transformed lives. People that need to be here to change their mindset about marriage, to change their ma mindset as singles, to change their mindset that would allow them to be able to see things differently. God will give them the grace to be here. Let's just begin to pray. Let's just begin to pray. Let's just begin to pray that God would allow each and every single part of this service to be a touch point to people that are going to be coming today. Let's just begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus that God will continue to give us the grace that this every single part of this service is going to be a touch point. It's going to be a touch point for people, for everybody that is going to be here. That indeed everybody that would come would have an evidence feeling of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just also move along and commit and commit everybody that's going to be here, everybody that's on their way, that is closing from work, that is entering bus, that is entering Keke, that is ordering a ride down here. Let's pray that God will take control. They will not have any accident on their way. They will come here safe and sound. People that dedicate their time day in and day out to make sure that this service happens, to make sure that people's lives are blessed, to make sure that you would come here, you would be able to receive. Let's just pray that for every single person that makes this service work and for every single person that is going to come and receive, that God will guide their footsteps down here in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Let's pray for Pastor Kunle as he's going to be on his way. Let's pray for the leadership of Singles Fellowship, that every single person that's, that supported us, that has given out of their time to be able to make sure, to be able to plan this um, fellowship to make sure that we are here today and we are able to hear the word and hear from pastor let's just let's just begin to pray and commit every single part of this service and commit everybody that's going to be here into god's hands in the mighty name let's begin to pray in jesus 
mighty name we pray. Let, in the same light, let us continue to let us continue to think and also reflect because um, for some of us that we've been coming for singles fellowship for the past few years, you know, we've been hearing different things. We've heard different topics day in and day out. You know, it's not just one thing to just hear these things. It's another thing to also practice. So let's pray that we will not just continue to hear these things as singles, but at the end of the day, to live that trans transformed life that we need to have, that God will give us the grace to be able to apply it into our lives. Because at the end of the day, you have to apply it to have a transformed life. So let's pray that we will not just hear the topics, we will not just hear the tips, we will not just hear the word and just hear it alone, but we, we would apply it into our daily lives. We would apply it into every single aspect of life that we we find ourselves is in in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray that every single thing that we would hear today, every single thing that we're going to listen to from Pastor Conan today, or the sent person that's going to be speaking today, that we would apply it into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus and not just hear it alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Jesus mighty name we prayed just still on on prayers before we go on I just want us to just reflect um, we're already in the in this new year and so far January has gone February has gone we are in the month of March and after March Q1 would have gone so I just want us to pray um, I know everybody has plans for the year everybody has goals everybody has aspirations for the year but I just want us to pray that in this before the end of this month that God will show himself mighty and the reason why I'm saying that is I know you get there's, there's the way life can get a bit the same you think of the same thing you are trying to achieve a goal you are planning towards the same thing and it just kind of seems like everything is the, is the same but let's just begin to pray that this before this month before this quarter end before we leave this first quarter that God will show himself mighty he will show himself to us as our father that because in the fountain of life church it's 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 the month of our of our common mercy god will show us uncommon mercy in the mighty name of jesus it's our year of um help me up okay it's our year of signs and wonders in the fountain of life church and it's our month of our common mercy so let's just think let's just think of those two things the month, the, our year of signs and wonders, we will continue to be signs and wonders. And it's our month of uncommon mercy. We will definitely receive uncommon mercy from our Father in the mighty name of Jesus. So let us begin to pray those two things. Uncommon mercy and signs and wonders in everything that we do. In every single thing that we do. Let us begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus mighty name we pray. Um, so I'll just like us to do two more things. So I don't know if you could just look for one person and just hold. I just want us to like just, uh, yes, thank you so much. Um, so this particular prayer, I want you to like stand in gap for this person. So if you can ask the person what it is that they would like to share for you to pray, but I'd just like you to just ask that person what it is that they would like you to pray about and just, just it's not going to be that long. Just, just, I just want it to be a bit more intentional than just asking, than, than just being a prayer. Just ask the person what it is that they would like to, you to particularly pray about and let's just pray about it. So you can just pray about it, pray about it. We'll soon, we'll soon call, call the opening prayer to, to a close.
In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Heavenly Father, powerful King, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your strength that you're giving to each and every one of us. Lord, we ask, Lord, as we start this service, you come and be with us. Sweet Holy Spirit, come, let your presence be with us. We ask that every single thing that we're going to do today would be according to your will, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, take all the glory. Take all the honor and all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe you've welcomed your neighbors to church. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you just extend your hands of welcome to your neighbor? I don't know if you know the person. Just say we're welcome to church. You're welcome to church. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Aha. Jesus. We give you praise. Of the universe, conqueror and king, master of the universe, conqueror on wings. You are the head over principalities. You are the head over powers. You are the head over the rulers. You are the master, master of the universe. Everybody help me say, you're the master, master of the universe, emperor, emperor and king. You are the master, master of the conqueror universe, conqueror and king. You are the head, you are the head, you are the head, you are the head over principalities. You are the head. Give God a dance of it. A dance of it. Make sure you're not standing still. Make sure you're giving God some praise in here. Hey, is God worthy? Ha! Ah. One more time. Everybody say, Master, Master of the universe, Emperor, Emperor of the You are the Master.
hands and worship Jesus. Lift up your hands, worship Jesus. Lift up your hands, worship Jesus. Just worship Jesus. Wherever you're standing, lift up your words of worship to Yahweh. Adonai. Thank you, merciful God. Try, try and worship Jesus. It's your reasonable act of worship. Merciful God, gracious God. Before the throne, He's where we've come. If you know the song, you can sing to your Father. To all the great and seek wisdom and seek wisdom. You, you have done the thing that separates, that separates. I'm no more outside, no more. I'm in your grave. Oil of favor, help me sing. Before the throne, before the throne, we swear, we swear we are. I've come to offer my praise and sing, and sing with God. You have torn the veil, you have torn the veil. That's it.
circumstances, no matter the situation we find ourselves, Father, you have just been that good God. He is a good God. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, we are worshipped. Praise the Lord, church. Good evening, everybody. How was our day today? Okay, so it's time for the promise of the week. Let's open our Bible to 2 Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 12. 2 Chronicles 1, verse 12. The KJV version says, Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have, have, been, have been before you. Either shall there be any after thee have the like. But I want to read the message translation. The message translation says, because of this, you get what you ask for. Wisdom and understanding. And I am presenting you the rest as a bonus, money, wealth, and fame. Beyond anything, the king before or after you have heard or will have. The, the part that struck me in this version, it says, because of this, you get what you ask for. So let's begin to tell, thank God that God actually gave us a blank check that whatever we ask, we get it. Begin to appreciate it. Give it that honor. It deserves the honor. It's not easy to give human a blank check. He said, whatever you want, I will give to you because of this. Let's thank him for that opportunity, for that grace to ask and it is given unto us. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Let's begin to thank him, appreciate him. It is not easy to give a blank check out that whatever you ask, I will do it. Let's begin to give him glory. He deserves it. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this grace you have given unto us. That whatever we ask, you will give unto us. Father, we are undeserving on this, but you have done this for us. Father, we so much appreciate you for this grace. A great grace to give us whatever we have asked for. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father, we appreciate you for the wisdom and knowledge you have given unto us to be able to deal with everyone we come across in our lives. Father, we are so grateful for this wisdom because we know that we do not lean on our own understanding. We lean on the understanding of he who is able to do according to his will. Father, we are so grateful for your wisdom that directs our paths, for your knowledge that you fill our, our mouth with. His word says, open your mouth and I will fill it. It doesn't just fill our mouth. It fills our mouth with his knowledge. Father, we are so grateful for the grace of your wisdom that guides us, that directs our paths. 
thank you, Jesus, for being our personal guide. As the one who is the giver of our knowledge, is the giver of the wisdom. Because whenever we open our mouths, he fills it with his own knowledge, not our knowledge. Father, we are so grateful. In Jesus' name, we are afraid. And to the last one, it says, and I am presenting this to you as a bonus. We are going to thank him again for that bonus of wealth and riches that we did not ask for, but he gave to us. Father, we thank you, Lord. Let's open our mouth and begin to appreciate him for giving us an extra after asking for wisdom and knowledge that he has given unto us. Father, we appreciate you for that wealth, for the riches, and above all, the honor that you have given to us as a bonus. Father, we are so grateful. Father, we appreciate you for this gift, the gift of this wealth, the gift of riches, and that of honor you have given to us without asking. You are a good God in all circumstances. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness that reign over our lives. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. in Jesus name we have prayed please can we all have our seats thank you all right very quickly would like to celebrate some special set of people they are very special so if it was your birthday from last week Tuesday up until today Monday please can you stand would like to celebrate you Let's go around, let's Happy celebrate that. to you, all glory. So let's just stretch our hands towards them, that God would increase them, that this would be the least they would ever be, that they will move from glory to glory, from strength to strength, that all the days of their life it shall be well with them, in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. All right, very quickly, please, can we all stand as we go into a brief session of worship, please? Let's just stand as the choir leads us in worship. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just lift our hands and say, Father, I thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. Say something good to him. Open your mouth. Appreciate him. He is worthy of our praise. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy is endure forever and ever. Father, we give you all the praise. Rakapala le kapu sindi rabara kanara basha. Irina rabara kapu sindi irina rabara kapa yere dara ba 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 ba. Somebody lift your voice and worship. Rakapala la bara. Ena na ro ma rabara kapu shi ara dere la ya. Ena na ro ma ire na ba e raburo kabara ra ba 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 ba. Ena na ra ma kabora shi ra ba 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 ba. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. Ha ha. I'm on the gods who is like thee. You are glorious in holiness. Carefully praises. Always do his wonders, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, who oh, is like unto thee? Oh, love, who oh, is like unto thee? Ha <laughs> ha, oh, Lord, I'm on the God. Who is like 
says, My Lord, you are good. 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 Just sing it solemnly. Oh my God, you are good. Hey, my God, you are so good. Harabia no no shibrati ade. Heruda baya no 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 shibrana ni ano. You are good to me. You are good. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. We may all be seated in God's presence. Praise the Lord. Welcome your neighbor once again. Say you are welcome to church. As I'm talking to them, ask them, is this your first time? Is there any answer? Ask them again, is this your first time? Okay, let's change it. Is this your first time after a long time? Okay, you know what? While we are waiting for them to answer the question, very quickly, um, somebody left his or her phone in the bathroom. I would like you, if you know it's you that you're missing your phone, meet one of the ushers to identify that you are the true owner of the phone. You come with the receipt and everything that actually shows that the phone belongs to you. Praise the Lord. So back to our statement. Where are the first timers in the house? Thank you, thank you. We prayed for you. And here you are here. Let's welcome them. We have more than one home. You cannot be shy. This is your father's house. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. We are very happy to welcome you. The beauty of nature, you shine all around. For you are everything. Everything is you. Precious Jesus, you see, somebody no one at the left left somebody left at the one you are. Oh. have you in the house tonight 
And it's our prayer that just as you've stepped your feet here today, every, every question you have, God himself will answer your question expressed in the name of Jesus. We say you are welcome home. You are welcome to where indeed you are meant to be. Welcome. Your handsome faces and beautiful faces are highly welcome. You may be seated in God's presence. With Jesus, joy, and Holy Ghost, welcome. Let's welcome Pastor Kunle Oshukunle. Let's move on to the next stage. Yeah. Jesus, joy, Holy Ghost, welcome. Is that it? Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's, let's all rise up on our feet. Father, we give you praise. We worship you. You know, as I, as I sat down there, you know what came to my mind? Is that I want to see more weddings this year. You know, some people are not excited. Honestly, I want to see more weddings this year. And it can happen. You understand? And you know, as I thought about it, the other word that came to my mind is that I think God is telling somebody or some few people, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You understand? Some people, you want all, everything to be perfect. There's nothing like that, oh. You understand? Just key in to what God has told you. You understand? There are, there's some, I'm talking to somebody. The person is beside you. The person, I'm not saying here. The person is your friend. Is close to you. And you are still, eh, maybe it's him, maybe it's not her, maybe it's him, oh, it's her. Hallelujah. Make that move right now, baby. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, make that move. Right now. Right now. Uh -huh. And I'm talking to you too, the people are behind me that are not married. Do you understand? In, in this fellowship, there are there are eligible. And as I stand there, you know, I have a vantage point. I'm seeing beautiful faces. I'm seeing handsome guys. I see people who have a great future. Hallelujah. Some say, I'm shy, I'm shy. Shy? We are bold and confident singles here. Hallelujah. We are what? Bold and confident singles. So from today, you understand? Just be coming to tell me, ah, Pastor, that thing you said last week, oh, that's last, that time, oh, maybe three months from now, this is the best thing. Oh. You understand? This, uh, some of you will come to fellowship. After fellowship, hey, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, blah, 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 blah. It's by the boss you'll be saying, surely, goodness and mercy. By the time you are saying, for the love of the Spirit, of, you are already in Antony. Daily. Praise the Lord. Say hello to people. You understand? Come to fellowship looking good. Hallelujah. When you get there, dust your shoes. Spray a little perfume more. Are you here? Come be here. If you, know, you understand? The makeup has disappeared a little. Put, put a little more. Don't just come any, anyhow, anyway. Come prepared. I don't know who I'm talking to. Come prepared. So that when they see you, say, ah, see the gentleman. See the pretty lady. Hallelujah. Something is coming. Something is coming. Becky, happy birthday to you. Your sister, it's sister Becky's birthday today. Hallelujah. Thank you for everything you do. I mean, she's so committed. And, and we thank God for you. You are going to share your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands and sing that song. My Lord, you are good. One more, one more time. Then we go into what we have to, for today. My Lord, you are good. My Lord, you are good. My Lord, you are good. You are
transform our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Last week I started talking on um, the importance of three things. If you're going to get married, three things you need to work on if you're going to get married because it has great impact or most of the impact on your marriage. Praise the Lord. And I spoke who, if you were, how many people were here last week? All right, if you were not here, ask your neighbor, what did he say after the service? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Or get, get look, it's, it's, it's online, and we welcome all our online, uh, online uh, people. Um, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. So it's on YouTube. You can, look, you can watch it. So I started talking about the heart, the tongue, and your actions. The heart, the tongue, and your actions. And we kind of did a Bible study, like I said, from Ephesians chapter 4, um, from verse 17. And I'm going to continue today uh, from verse 25, and we will conclude it today. Hallelujah. And yet last week, I focused quite a bit on, on our hearts, isn't it? And uh, today, I'm going to focus on our tongue and our actions. Praise the Lord. Um, the last thing I said last week um, before, before leaving is this, and I will repeat it, I will start from there again, that your marriage will never be better than your mouth. Hallelujah. Your marriage will never be better than your mouth. So as a single now, one of the things you need to start investing in is investing in your mouth. Are you here? You need to start training your mouth to say the right things even when it is not, your heart is not happy. Are you here? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? Speaks. So as you train your heart, you train your mouth. Because what would happen in a relationship, like I said last week, is that every human being, the person you are going to get married to is a container and a content, isn't it? And it is the content you will relate with most of, most of the time. And that content is what is in their heart. Now, the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? But when your heart is renewed and comes in contact with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and you renew it through the word of God, that heart of evil, that heart of stone uh, is changed. Remember last week, I talked about a hardened heart. Praise the Lord. And that when you have it, your heart is hard, it cannot receive, it is also difficult for your heart to give. So when you are in a marriage, you want a heart that is not hard, you want a heart that is soft, a heart that is vulnerable to the other person, praise the Lord. And a heart that is filled with good things so that your mouth begins to say the right things. So your marriage will never be better than your mouth. So you need to start to train your mouth now because even when you are with friends, when you are with people, sometimes you get angry and what do you start to say? I can assure you that when you get married, the tempo at which 
your partner may anger you, may even increase because now you see them, they are closer to you, isn't it? And because they are closer to you, the things you didn't know about them before you begin to know and some of them will put you off. Are you here? Now, how are you going to react? What are you going to see? Because everything you say is a seed that will bring forth fruit. Praise the Lord. So, when I'm, I'm married, when I'm in a relationship, I want to speak the right things so that I can get the right things. Now, it doesn't mean the situation is always right. Are you here? The situation may be, oh, I am angry about something. The situation may be, I am upset with you about something. But I don't go by castigating you, criticizing you, bringing you down, uh, um, affecting your self-esteem. I don't do that. I still find a way to bless you even in that situation. So you must learn to, be, to bless that partner. Now, let's go. And so one way to prepare for your marriage is to prepare your mouth. Are you here? Is to start preparing your mouth. To say, what will my mouth say? How will my mouth? Some people, even today, you need your mouth to be washed with. Uh, you know, you need, you need soap. He soap, like the Bible says. I mean, you need, to, you need to scrub it because of the layers of things that is on it. Because it is not scrubbed properly. The things that will come out of it, hey. And you know, there are some words that you speak that is difficult for, to forget for many years. Even in marriage. For instance, you get to a point where you say, I don't even know why I married you. It is a mistake that I married you. Even if somebody forgives you, it is difficult. You know, the, 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 the what, you see, our words are either making deposits or making withdrawals. Are you here? It's like a bank account. Your words will make a deposit. So, for instance, when you give grace to your spouse, maybe they did something wrong. I says, don't worry, it's okay, it's sorted out. That's a deposit. Let me give you an example. Many, a, a number of years ago, <laughs> I, I, I got home. You know, sometimes it's better not to say something than to say something and regret it. Because your marriage is so important that you need to, you need to, you need, your, your mouth needs to say the right things in that marriage. You know, a number of years ago, I remember I, I was in traffic for three hours. I mean, when I got home, as I got home like this, Nepal just took light. This was, I must, it must have been like 18 years ago or something like that. Nepal just took light. I said, ah, okay, no problem. We got up, I got upstairs. I went to switch on the generator. Typically, my wife organizes some of times because she was at home a lot of time. I think fuel had finished. Ah. Oh. As, as that happened, the next thing was, okay, bring rechargeable lamp. As I brought rechargeable lamp like this, after two minutes, it wasn't charged. The thing died. My wife was so, ah, I'm sorry. I didn't see anything. I just wore my slippers, took my shirt, left the house, went to look for somebody, bought candle, brought back home, put the candle, and I ate. That was it. Now, my tongue could go into, don't you know somebody is stressed? How could you not have bought fuel? You didn't even charge this generator. How can you? Hey. Yeah, you didn't even charge this rechargeable fan or rechargeable this. You did do this. You did that. I mean, you, ju you just go on I mean, you just go. Brrr. Meanwhile, she too must have been carrying her own burden during the day. There may be. Now, one of the things you must realize is that because we are not perfect, we will not always act perfectly. And therefore, because we are not perfect, grace must come out of our mouth. Because we are not perfect, that's why God gives us grace. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says that, that um, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with the feelings, with our feelings, isn't it? Of weakness. We don't have. So what happens is that you too in your, in your home, in your relationship, you must sympathize with that person. And not just fire your mouth. Brrr. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, I've, have I always been this perfect? No, sometimes I, I've told you the story before of how my wife called me and she said something. Immediately the thing left her mouth. She said, she knew I have heard. Mm, I shouldn't have said it. She knew it. And me too. I just picked it up. She said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the, the ego inside of me, the thing, he couldn't take it. This thing cannot bale. It cannot hit the ground like that. I just went, the Holy Ghost. I said, I want the Benny now. They have apologized. So at the end of the day, I, I had to say, okay, I, I'm sorry too. I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. Your, your mouth should be able to minister grace. Your mouth should be able to minister sorry. Are you here? Especially brothers, men. You don't like to apologize. You use style to apologize. When there's a problem, when you have erred and done something wrong, rather than saying, oh, darling, I'm really sorry about that thing, you'll be like, oh, should we go and eat? Should we go and... You'll be going around the corner. If you're a man there, open your mouth, say, I am sorry. sorry. It's possible. Praise the Lord. That I am sorry is a deposit. In your relationship. Is somebody here? All right. So, because words don't just ev evaporate. When you speak them, something happens. Your words are powerful tools that can shift the atmosphere in your marriage. They are powerful tools that can shift the atmosphere in your marriage. You know, there are, there are things that you will tell your spouse that, you know, for the next one month, they will be feeling the effect of what you have said. Are you here? I mean, they will be feeling the effect. Good things. It can be bad things. Change the atmosphere for good or change the atmosphere for bad. You must be able to bless. Wake up in the morning and say, the first thing I will do is I will bless my spouse. Hallelujah. You know, there are times in which I would just wake up or in the, I say, I want to bless you. You bless her. Your mouth is for prayer for him. Your mouth is for prayer for her. There are couples who go months without praying for each other. You don't open your mouth and say, five minutes, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this person. That's your mouth. And if things are happening in your life, it's your mouth you also need to use to change it. See, when I met my wife, I mean, I, might, I told her her mouth was sharp. But it was sharp in a good way. That, you know, you know when... When she gives it to somebody, you say, hmm, a lot more. Go catch you. You know that kind of sharp mouth and all that. But it's not becoming of a Christian. So I told her. You know one of the things she started to do? When we got married, I just noticed, even till today, she will quote the scriptures and says, and says, I am love, I am kind, I am patient. When I was a child, I used to be like a child. Now that I'm old, I mean, she quoted that Scripture of 1 Corinthians 13, she, will, she memorized it and quoted it every day. And you know what? It started to show in her life. It started to show in her, in what, in her speech. So one of the things you need to do to yourself, get scriptures to, to wash your mouth. Get scriptures into your heart so that you are so full of it, you are saying it to yourself that even when people upset you, when your spouse upsets you, it's not, 
see your head bongolo bongolo like no you know you can still bless them like i was saying that couples go months they don't pray for each other they don't take out time to your mouth is to pray for him your mouth is to pray for her take out time every day there are things i declare every morning for my children, for my wife, it's, it's, that's it. Only blessings will come. You see, when you curse your spouse, it, it reflects on you. Because she can't be cursed and you be blessed. She can't be cursed. He can't be cursed and your marriage will be blessed. No. So, like they say, in Nigerian parlance, you are doing yourself. You are what? You are doing yourself. So if you are here today, that's one of the things you need to start to work on. Your mouth. Careless words. Unloving words. Disrespectful words. Words spoken in anger. What do they do? They don't build your marriage. They tear it down. Don't just speak a careless word to your wife or to your husband, to your spouse. There are some words you speak. They are so unloving. I mean, they, they, I mean, they, 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 they bring the person down. How can you begin to speak words like comparing your spouse to another person? That's an unloving word. How can you begin to speak disrespectful words, even outside? Some people, you are, you, are, you are with your spouse, you are angry, and you show your anger to your spouse outside. You can't even mask it with a smile. When she says something, You know, recently my wife told me something. That somebody was in our house. This must have been like 16, 17 years ago. And she did something to me. I can't even remember. She, she was sharing it with me about three weeks ago. She did something with, to me. She said, that she shouldn't have done in front of that person. The person may not have noticed. But she said, I just did. It was later she said, oh, I'm really sorry. After, I can't even remember this thing. But we managed the situation. I did, you didn't react. Hallelujah. So you need to begin to say, what are the words that I'm speaking? It can't, they must be loving words. Some of us need to train, you know, and I understand where we're coming from. Some of us need to train our mouths to start to say loving words. Words like, you know, I love you. I really appreciate you. You are the best thing that's ever happened to my life. You know, I, 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 I love you so, so, so much. You're, you're so good to me. Thank you. If you're married, oh, thank you for all you do for the children. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Oh, you are so lovely. You are so beautiful. You are so... Have a nice day. Some people cannot say. I'm serious. You need to train to say loving words to your... You see, the thing you say builds the marriage or destroy the marriage. But if you've learned it now by saying loving words, if you are not married, say it to your sisters. Say it to your brothers at home. Oh, thank you for, for making this food for me. Thank you for going the extra mile for doing it. Start practicing. Say it to your sister. Say it to your fellow workers. Don't go and say, I love you to your fellow workout. Do you understand? I appreciate, oh, you're looking so beautiful. That's such a beautiful, some people, you come here, you've seen people all the while, all the while, you never say, oh, you're looking, you're looking beautiful. Oh, that's what she, people, some, some of you cannot commend people. You can't say that, oh, that's such a beautiful dress you're wearing. You know? Oh, you are, you're, so, you're, you're so glowing. Oh, you bring so much peace. Every time you bring so much peace. 
Praise the Lord. It doesn't have to be on. Huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It doesn't have to be. Let it be your natural life, honestly. In fact, as I'm saying that, I want to, it's as if I want to camp into saying loving words. You understand? So our, our, our mind is so, is, our mind needs to be renewed so that we see the good things in the life of, I, I remember a story that, that Pastor Bimbo shared with us many years ago of how this guy, they said any, everybody, he had something good about everybody, to, uh, something good about everybody, something good to say about everybody. If it, you, you are always, he never said something bad, something good. And I said, we are going to catch him. He said one day they brought a criminal who had done so many bad things, maybe killed somebody and all that. He said by the time the guy saw him, he says, okay, yes, I know. But you know, he, he really has such a good nose. He still saw, see, he still saw the good. He still saw the good in that person. Now, I'm not saying that there won't be challenges and you won't sort out challenges. But in sorting out those challenges, be sure that you, you remain loving. Praise the Lord. What does the Bible say? It says we should speak the truth in what? Love. Most of us forget that. They say, I'm just going to say my mind. Ma, ma, I will give you a piece of my mind. Praise the Lord. And you give so all the pieces of your mind to you have no mind. Praise the Lord. So you must have loving, loving, loving words. Discovering, you see, disco discovering love and respect is one thing. Living it out is another. You have to, and, and practicing love and respect takes a lot of work. And much of that work has to do with how we use our mouth. In marriage, the mouth matters a great deal. It matters a great deal. How are you using your mouth? What is coming out of your mouth? What does Ephesians, what does Colossians, I think it's Colossians 4. Let me read it to you. Colossians 4. Let me just go there. Colossians 4. Let your speech always be with grace. You know, when I read the Bible, I, I told you once that I read the Bible one morning and I was going to work and the Bible says, be gentle always. I closed the Bible. Honestly, I, I, I closed it. I said, what's this now? I called my wife. I said, do you know what I've just read? He said, be gentle always. I said, how, how? But you see, God does not demand where it's not, he has not placed an investment. You have the investment of the Holy Ghost inside of you to help you to do all things. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you are here and you're always saying the wrong thing, say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I speak the right things all the time. Praise the Lord. Say it for many months. You will start seeing your speech change. He says, let your speech always, not sometimes, oh, be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how, to, how you ought to answer each one. Which means that when you are speaking, if there's no salt in, a food, in food, what happens? It's tasteless. It's tasteless. So when I speak to people, I bring flavor into their lives. Praise the Lord. When you are speaking to your wife, to your husband, to the one you are in relationship with, are you flavoring them? Or deflavoring them? Are you flavoring? There must be flavor in what you are providing. Hallelujah. Is someone learning something? Are you here with me? Now. Because words, the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Which means tongue has power. The tongue is neutral. It's neutral. You are either giving, you are either producing life or you are producing death. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. 
verse 25. Therefore, I'm reading Amplified. Rejecting all falsehood. Which means falsehood may be around you, but the Bible says you should reject it. You say, you know what? I'm not going to take this. Whether lying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, defrauding, I like this one, telling half truths in marriage. You know, I hear things like men lie. In marriage, you cannot lie to your spouse. Once you start to lie, trust starts to erode. And what happens with lying is that you will use one lie to cover another lie. Hallelujah. You can't. You will use one lie to cover. And you see, lie destroys the foundation of a marriage. So in my marriage, I will always speak the truth. Even if it hurts. But it also means that I will not do things that will now make me to want to lie. Half truths. Thank you. Half truths. You know, I didn't really, I didn't really lie, but I didn't provide full information. Mm. Oh, how much do you earn? You know, you earn five hundred k. Just say, well, it's about three hundred and eighty plus. Yes. 380 plus. But you know it's fine so that you can have truth. Oh, where are you coming from? You know you branch somewhere, but you, do, you don't stop talk about where you branch. Is it, you, we use branch in Nigeria. We, uh, you branch somewhere. You know <laughs> that you shouldn't have branched there. You know what I'm saying? It's office. Yes, there was traffic, but not that much traffic. So you conveniently leave out that information. What is happening? Your tongue is putting your mind. The Bible says you should reject it. Reject falsehood, lying, defrauding, telling half truths. Some people, you are beginning to look at your relationship now. Hmm. Is he half truth? Tell the truth and let the devil be ashamed. The truth and nothing but the truth. Don't say he, he can't undo it. Try it first. Praise the Lord. Rumors and any of such deeds. Speak truth to each one with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one another. And we are all parts of the body of Christ. The same thing in a relationship. The Bible says you are one. Isn't it? We have become, for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they too shall become one. So if you are one and you are lying to your spouse, you are lying to yourself. If you are defrauding your spouse, you are defrauding yourself. That's what Paul was saying in chapter 5 of Ephesians where he was talking about how can somebody not love themselves. Praise the Lord. So you must understand that this is, this is unity. We are united. And therefore everything we say must cement that unity. Everything. Be angry. At sin, at immorality and injustice and God, yet do not sin. Do not let your anger cause you shame, nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. Now, we've started going from what you are speaking to your actions. You know, you can be angry and say it, you can be angry and keep it with your mouth. 
You just, mm. good morning. Mm. Afternoon. Mm. Come and eat. I'm not hungry. <laughs> Somebody is saying, hmm, is it that? Is this how Pastor Kunle does? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Me, I don't do like that. Oh. Eh? I cannot be hungry and reject food. Oh. Are you know that one? Have you heard that proverb before? Okay. Praise the Lord. So, it says, because you will see as we go on, we started getting into your actions. It means that you can be upset about something. Sit down and discuss it. Don't let the sun go down. Don't go angry to sleep. Because when we, when we go angry... To sleep. You see, when we, when we are angry, the devil starts to put a wedge. When you don't understand what the other person is saying, the person doesn't understand what you're saying, the devil starts to put a wedge and starts to create things. You know, I've seen it in my life a lot. When maybe I'm upset about something, when we first got married, I would start thinking about, hey, so she will now do this. She will now. I mean, I mean, I start building stories in my mind. Stories that, that, won't be, that won't come true. The devil will tell you, hey, so you will not do this. You will not say you are not doing this. You are not doing that. You are not doing this. Stories. I told you guys the story before of how when my wife was pregnant with her second child, her daughter, who is 18 now, she, um, she, I was, we were about to sleep and I was about to tell her something she responded so, she just, but, and I was upset. I said, me? The head of this family? How can she treat me like this? Praise the Lord. <laughs> but you see, I should have given her grace because when somebody is pregnant, they, they can be on the edge. But I didn't understand that. Men, I'm telling you now, when your wives are pregnant, just take heavy dose of patience. You can't be getting angry because you have never been pregnant before. When you get pregnant, you will understand what pregnancy is all about. Because it's as if your body does it, it's not your body again. So you must, I should have given that grace. So I went, I just turned and slept off. The first and the last time I did that. The next morning was a Sunday morning. This time I was already a pastor. Praise the Lord. So Sunday morning I got up, dressed up, went to the living room to wait. Say when she's ready, she'll come and call me, join me. Then we'll go to church. Like, mm, mm. But what happened? She just started to call my name. Kule, Kule, I go, why is this woman calling me? Woman! Why? You calling me? You don't know what you did yesterday? Anyway, after like a minute, I got up and walked to the room, and we had a long corridor. And you know, I didn't run to the room, even though she was calling my name. <laughs> when I got to the room, what I saw was interesting. <laughs> Made me scared. She was bleeding. Now, when you start bleeding, when you're pregnant, it's very bad, because it could mean you're about to miscarry. Immediately I saw that, I said, oh God. You know, in this scripture, it says, don't give the devil space. If you read it down. Don't. Sometimes we invite the devil. The Bible says, if the edge is not broken, the serpent will not strike. Your actions, your speech, invites the enemy into your home. Praise the Lord. So immediately I saw that I said, Kunle, you are stupid. You were stupid. You should know what you should know better. So immediately we got together, we prayed, she knelt down, I prayed for her, we made up, we did that. I mean, just made up, and we were late to church. But who cares? You see, you are going early to church, your home is on fire. Are you here? So we made up. When we came back from church, she called the doctor. She said she lay on the, on the bed. Anyway, three months later, we had, the, we had our daughter. See what the, see your actions. See where the actions are. Actions from anger. Anger 
is one, sh one letter short of danger. If you add D to anger, it becomes what? Not dangal. It becomes what? Danger. Praise the Lord. So, it says, and do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. Bible says anywhere there is strife, there is every form of evil work. Children die, spouses die, diseases come in, poverty comes in. That scripture terrifies me. If I want to get, I say, ah, evil work cannot come here. So you see how your heart translates into your tongue, into your actions. It says you, some of, some of you are, you have PhD in malice. Malice holding. In fact, the people you are holding in malice don't even know you are holding them. You know, anger sometimes, malice sometimes is like taking poison and hoping the other person will die. You, are, you have PhD in malice. Any little thing, hmm, what you lock up. Praise the Lord. And once you lock up, your heart becomes hard. When, can you see we're going back? When your heart becomes hard, it cannot receive, it cannot give. Nothing can flow through. The only thing flowing through is poison. And God does not want that. Praise the Lord. The thief who has become a believer must no longer steal, but instead must he must work hard, making an honest living, producing what that which is good with his own hands, so that he will have something to share with those in need. Now, if you were before, gimme, 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 in marriage. It is, I give, 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 I give. That's what I learned from that. Your action, because of what is in your heart, because you used to collect before. Collect, 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 collect. Now, you must be able to give, 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 give. And that's because the Holy Spirit is now in you. Now, do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech that is good for building up others according to the need of the occasion, so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him by whom you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption, that the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and perpetual animosity, resentment, strife, fault finding, and slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spiteful, verbal abuse, malevolence. He says you should take all this away from you. Fault finding. Some of all, some people. In marriage, you're always finding fault. You put the cup. The cup, you, you didn't put it like this. The shirt, you hung it. You didn't hang like this. You put this. I mean, you don't even praise. And you need to praise. Your spouse makes food for you. You say, your shower jack in by. Oh, it's salt cheap in the market now. <laughs> salt is very cheap. I say, why, why, is, why are you asking? Because the amount of salt you put in this. <laughs> there are sometimes we eat it with love. Are you here? You, you, that, that thing, don't just... Fall fine, fall fine, fall fine, fall fine, fall fine. It says that do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And you know what grieves the Holy Spirit? 
What grieves the Holy Spirit is when you start to treat your spouse in this way. You see, you must elevate the Holy Spirit in your life. When you elevate the Holy Spirit in your life, what happens is that you speak the right things, you act in the right way. Because sometimes you will want to give it to them. Do you understand my point? Holy Spirit say, don't talk to my daughter like that. Don't talk to my son like that. And he said, hmm. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit must be principal. When you do all these things, you begin to grieve. Now, finally, because I need to close it today. Be kind, helpful to one another, tender-hearted. Remember I spoke about tender-hearted last week. Compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another, readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. So, you need to be helpful to one another and be forgiving. You see, marriage is two forgivers living with each other. Your spouse will do something wrong because they are not perfect. But I can assure you, because, because they are good people, they didn't do it on purpose. I don't think every time my wife has wronged me, she has said, hmm, today, that guy, I will show him. It's me and him in the same trouser. I will show him. No. Mostly an error. She didn't think something through, or I didn't think something through, or I misunderstood what she was trying to say. And based on those things, I take up. So, then we must help each other. That's another action. Don't leave your spouse to do everything. There are some things that they, they need help with. Help them and forgive one another. You see, the more you forgive, the more you find out that as they, as they, as they wrong you, you know, there are some wrongs that are heavy. Do you understand my point? That you need to sit down and discuss it and ensure that you forgive and they don't do it anymore. But on a daily basis as you are there, forgiveness is important. Forgiveness. And forgiveness is based on grace. Do you understand? You, you know, your spouse must not have to earn your forgiveness. He should not, she doesn't have to earn your forgiveness. If you want me to forgive you, I want pound your yam and edikai kong. Or you want them, or you know, you want them to do something so that you can. No, forgiveness should be by grace. As you forgive them, you know, you lay a foundation of peace and a foundation for growth. Where there's unforgiveness, there can't be growth in the relationship. Because something is, whole, you know, remember that scripture where Jesus was talking about how God, for, uh, uh, the king forgave somebody who was owing him. The, the person who didn't forgive, they locked them in prison, isn't it? You see, what happens when you don't forgive in relationship, there is imprisonment. When there's imprisonment, what happens is that freedom is restricted. You've restricted freedom in your home. And that's not what God wants. God wants freedom in your home. And where there is freedom, there can be growth. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name Amen. to work on our hearts, to work on our tongue, and to work on our actions. Let's stop here for today. <laughs> amen and amen. Do we have, let's take the offering. We have a question. Okay. Please, let's have the question. Good evening, Pastor. Please, please, sir, you talked about, about saying truth always, even when it is very hard for your partner to hold it and they can't take it. But you still say it. So, so, you're, so you still say it so that your mind can be free. Then at the end, it said it is over between both of you. Please, what should I do? Uh, it depends on what you did. <laughs> do you understand my point? You know, that's why sometimes the gravity of what you do, 
you must understand why you are doing it. This thing is grave. Do you understand my point? Let me give you an example. You are dating somebody now and the person cheats on you and you, you can see that they cheat, cheated on you and they come to tell you that I cheated on you. You cannot hold them back and say they, they must, yes, they, they may forgive you, but you can't hold them back and say they can't walk away. Because when you were enjoying, in quotes, the cheating. Yeah. So you just have to take it and say, man, I ask for your forgiveness. It's okay. You move on. Do you understand my point? So don't, don't, don't put people in that, what you call it, and say, you know. And you know, what, what one of the things most of us need to realize is that if the shoe was on the, if it was you, that they told that to. I'm sure you two will say it's over. Yes. So, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Second Let's go. question. Um, sir, please, why is it that when a guy knows that you have given birth to a child, um, you have a child before, uh, they started treating you badly, and maybe it happens that both of you have had something together, they will start calling you names, and then later break up with you. Why? Well, I don't know. That's your specific, um, what you call it, experience. And my point is, we all make mistakes in our lives. Uh, and whatever errors we've made in our lives, we've repented, we've moved on. And it's important that we are not making those errors again. We've built on ourselves. We've become, we've become, we've added value to ourselves. That irrespective, there are many people who marry people who have, who have had children, either out of wedlock or maybe their spouse died. I mean, for, for various reasons. So if you have a specific issue that is, that is uh, specific to you, you, you understand? And it means that that's not, your, that's not your husband. You know, you've got to move forward and believe God for your own husband. Praise the Lord. Anybody who calls you names who treats you because of the things you've gone through that God has forgiven you and you have moved on, is, you know, is not worthy of you. Good evening, sir. Is it only the man that should give in relationships or in marriage? All of us. We are all here to give. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I will be weary of anybody who, if I am giving, that's, if one party is giving and the other party is not giving, you know the definition of that relationship is called a draining relationship draining and if it's draining is you have become a parasite you understand you're all, ever taking not coming to the full knowledge ever taking you are sucking the person's blood and they will get tired praise the lord you don't want that kind of relationship good evening pastor Kune. please where is the balance between having to tell people truth and being discreet about telling people our past, especially when we are meeting them early or for the first time. So I don't, I don't expect you that the person you are meeting for the first time, you just say, ah, if not for the grace of God for my life. Ah, that he saved me. If you know how many abortions I've had in my life, if you know how many girls I have, me safe, I will run. Do you understand my point? My point is information about, you don't go on the street and say, bros, wait, wait, let me tell you about my life. <laughs> Do you understand? Information is given to people as you develop that relationship and you gain their trust. That's when you start to give information. You don't give that kind of deep information because there's no commitment on their side. As you begin to see commitments deepen, that's when you start to give information. However, when you, if you decide to get married to somebody, it's important you share vital information with that person. Because if you don't share that information and you get married and they now know it can break the relationship, it can break the marriage. Because they will tell you, why did you hide such a vital information? And one of the things that, that scares a lot of us is that we think that if I share this information, this person will walk away. Now that you are sharing it, are they not walking away? Do you understand? It means that 
they think you are dishonest. Especially if they've shared their own past, their own lives with you. Share it. If they, need to, if they want to walk away, then they're not yours. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other? Comment and question before we close for tonight. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, first, I want to say something on that child something. Because in, in my own case, eh, this uh, having a child out of wedlock, it has really, really like battled me. Because my mommy... Every time she always say that my, my mates are married, I will not get married, that all the people that are supposed to have married me have left me. Even that my fiance that we were together has left me, so that me and him will not we, we be fighting. He said, she, that is, she has been using that word severally against me. And come to the question now I want to ask now. The question now is this, in fact, I don't, I don't Thank you for this uh, the teaching that you have been teaching us. Because this mouth thing, as I'm talking now, I feel like just crying. Because my mommy uses hard words on me. She would like call the children and hate me. She, that is, even when my dad was alive, two of them would be fighting. I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. Like I'm confused. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will, you know, you know, one of the things that happens is this. Words, you know, the Bible says in, um, um, I think it's Proverbs chapter 15. Uh, it's well with you, my sister. Um, I need to find the scripture. Um, there's a scripture I'm looking for. Um, yeah. Proverbs 15, 4. It says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. So one of the things that happens is this. When the tongue is perverse, you understand? what starts to happen is that it starts to, there's a, another scripture that talks about arrows. It starts to shoot arrows. Now, you can imagine this place. If I start to shoot, you know, you know darts. If I start to, over time, that place would not be the same anymore. That's what has happened to you. There's a lot of darts and arrows that have been shot into your heart that it has disfigured it. So you begin to see life, if, not, if you are not careful, through that. But if I want to repair that wall, what will I do? I will bring fresh cement, isn't it? I will scrape it first, isn't it? Even when I scrape it, you know it's, it's a, it's, it's, it will be hard because it won't look so good anymore. So that scraping... You know what the Bible says? By the washing of the water, by the word of God. The Bible says the word of God is a hammer. Do you understand? As I start to do it, it is difficult. It is hard on me. The word of God is, it is hard. But you see, the word of God is also honey. So as I begin to do it, then I now start to put new cement. As I put new cement, it's not the day I cement it that I will paint it. So there's a process of time. That I've done. Then once I cement it, then I start to paint it. Are you here? When I paint it, if I'm not careful, it will look better and sharper than all the other parts of it. So it means that the way you started is not always the way you have to end. You understand my point? And in that case... One of the things that start now happens is that you can now put a guard in front of that thing so that when the arrows come, it cannot penetrate. 
So one of the things we need to start to do is to, and how do you do it? To take the word of God. To say, I am beautiful. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In the name of Jesus, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I arise, I shine, for my light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Darkness may cover the earth, deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over me and his glory shall be seen upon me. Thank you, Jesus, because you are doing excellent wonders in my life. Thank you because I'm a product of uncommon mercy. Thank you because everywhere I go, I receive the favor of God, the favor of God and the favor of man. In the name of Jesus, I speak. You confess this to yourself so many times, many, day, many times, it begins to restructure your life, then it begins to put a guard on your life so that those things, you see, after a while, when people start to see how you are doing, they will be afraid to speak some words to you. Do you know there are some people that, there are some things you want to say to them. When you see the elegance of their lives, you say, hmm, Nibiko, not here. Why? Because you have seen how their lives are. Then, secondly, because of the hurt in that place, you too need to start to take time to pray for the people causing it. The Bible says pray for your enemies. You know, when somebody says the wrong thing to me, to pray for them is not in my end. It's not what you want to say. You want to fight back. Just say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my mom. Thank you. You know, one thing we must always understand. Do you realize that you will not be here if your mom did not give birth to you? So there's something good she still did. Some of us, we throw out the baby with the bad, bad bath water. There is something good. You brought me into this life. And in the name of Jesus, you know, you will, tell, you will say things that I will, I, you, you, I, you will see my children's children. You will start to pray for her. When she says all those things, do you understand? In, as she's saying it, you are praying in the spirit under your breath. That's the shield. That's the shield. He's not landing. Praise the Lord. But it will take time and you But it will take time and you will do it. But you see, those things, I can see they are so deep-seated in you. You need to uproots it through the word of God, maintain your life through the word of God. And I can tell you, you have a bright future. Something good is going to happen to you. Amen. You understand? Your mother is going to see your children's children. And you are going to be the one to bless them. You know, some people that they have despised, the Bible says where, where this, they have spoken shame, God is going to bring double honor. And God is going to bring double honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. If you're here this evening and you're not born again, I want you to say after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. From today, I am born again. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Be to you according to the confession of your faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to challenge you, next week, bring a friend. Just, you know, if you're going to bring a friend, it means you're going to tell like five or six people. At least one of them will come. Just challenge you, bring a friend. Uh, next week is friendship, friendship, friendship Monday. Praise the Lord. Bring a friend. I'm not joking. Uh, in my own calendar, it's called Friendship Monday. And we'll be doing some Friendship Mondays as we go. Don't forget, bring a friend. You understand? And we'll see where that leads us. All right, let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Hold on. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Increase you in Jesus' name. Any wrong thing on your path, the Lord is taking it off in Jesus' name. There is a door opening for somebody this week in the name of Jesus. An unusual door in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you for reign of blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. All right, tell your neighbor, surely.
goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Another neighbor, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over you. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you, quickens your mortal body to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Make sure you meet somebody before you go. You know, say, so, say hello to somebody.